Hello folks, my LG washing machine has the drain pump continuously running and it won't stop. So this is the steps that I take in order to completely do a hard boot or a firmware reset and first I have to drain all of the electrical current from the control panel module. And these are the steps that I do, which is necessary to do that. This is a scientific process. And this is what I do. What you do is whatever you decide to do. I'm not instructing or telling anyone what to do. First thing I do is I take a flathead precision screwdriver, like you would use on a pair of eyeglasses to tighten the screws. And that's necessary if you look over here. You can see that there's a place in these little, again, I'm just off of the control panel here. This is the side of the washer. And there's a small little indention where you can pry these little pieces out. Allow you access to the Phillips head screw that's underneath of it. There's another one over here, which I've already removed. So, one on either side. Now before I remove that screwdriver, that screw with a screwdriver, come back here and I want to pull the power plug so that the power is off. Again, that's most important. Did I not forget that? Now we can hear. <laughs> it sounds, you could hear that pump running continuously. It, you know, it will run for about five, ten minutes, and then it'll switch off, and then you can turn the washing machine back on again with the power button, and the pump cuts back on again. It, it's, it's a forever process. You could let it sit for days, and it would never go away. All right, so, by the way, those plastic caps, I have removed them, permanently, and I keep them in a little plastic bag here in case I ever want to put them back, but I have no intention of putting them back. They're just something to slow me down in my process. Okay, I keep them in a Ziploc bag. These, which just came out of here, I leave them in there not too taut, not too tight, okay? Just tight enough is what I do to where they're in place and not moving. That way it allows me to remove all this. Again, on the left hand side, that was the right hand side, there is also a screw. I removed that too. Now, this entire control panel will slide. You must open this washer door. And you can place your finger here on the side and push. And voila. Now I have my glove on. I also have a microfiber towel here. And you may use a flathead screwdriver if the Phillips head doesn't work. But if you'll notice, there are one, two, three small vent-like structures that are retaining this metal box. And so what you would do is pry at those three points first. Pry up and out. Pry out like that. Then simply there's a hole on the end down here. And, and or you may I use a I, this is what I do. I use a cloth so I can grab this piece. There is a screw down here where the wires are that may be removed. I don't worry about it. That screw is holding this box at, at one point still. I just allow that metal to flex and bend. I don't worry about it. Pull the box open. Again, what I do, trying to hold this K 
camera and talk to you at the same time and <laughs> so, all right there we go and each time you do this it becomes easier first time you have to pry this box open it's rather difficult okay again if you look down there it's still being held on that one end all right what we've got, we have, these are two black capacitors, the round black units right here. There's one, there's two. They are identical. You see those? What I do is I tap on them. Capacitors hold a charge. They hold a current. They can be polarized or non-polarized either way. These are rated at uh, 250 WV 680 Mu Faradad. Uh, I'm looking for a polarization. I don't. I can't see the indication whether it says it's polarized or not. It should be a plus or a minus with a symbol drawn. I'm discharging the current. See that? Now, to anyone who didn't understand this, I'm going to repeat myself. Those capacitors hold a charge. In order to have a firmware reset or a hard boot, where you have discharged any current and all current so it's not storing parameters that go to the that tell the drain to continuously drain you have to get all the current out of the control board and if the if this washer were plugged into the alternating current you would continually have current here we've unplugged it problem is is these two in a sense they hold a charge like a battery can hold a charge. They have two plates and they have some insulation material between them and they will hold a charge like a primitive battery. And one way to get rid of a charge is to move some electrons around, literally. Okay? Now, putting this back is simple. Hear that snap? Press it back into place. Now we're going to put this down like this. Slide the panel back so it matches up here. I wore gloves during this whole process. Take the electrical cord, plug it back in, and press your power button. Voila! The drain is not continuously running anymore. I fixed it. Now, thank the Lord God and praise, give praises to Jesus. And turn your life over to Jesus and be saved. And hit that subscribe button and contact me. I need some, I need some nice people on here to interact with. And I hope everyone has a blessed day, night, weekend, week, month, year, and life. And uh, these are the steps that I did. And if it doesn't work for you on the first attempt, you might need to tap it again and attempt once more because sometimes those electrons will stay inside of there. And again, these are steps in which I did. And if you decide to take this process and, and attempt it yourself, do so at your own risk. I'm not responsible.
this works for me and it has saved me from buying a new washing machine and I have had to do this approximately once a month sometimes sometimes I can go two months without having to do this procedure but I've got it down to science now so I figured out exactly what to do and God bless you and thank you.